When doing allowable stress design for timber design of structures, adjustment factors are an important piece uh, that is required during the design process. So this video will cover some aspects associated with adjustment factors. Here's a little bit of an outline of how this video will go. We'll talk about allowable stresses, uh, adjustment factors for sawn lumber, and then adjustment factors for glue lamb members also. We will mention adjustment factors, at least the concept that adjustment factors are also applicable to other things besides just sawn lumber and glue lamb members also. Let's first talk about allowable stresses. Here are some examples that would be related to sawn lumber. I've selected just two examples, bending stress and compressive, compressive stress. The first one here is the allowable bending stress, FB prime. That is found by taking the bending stress from the table from the NDS supplement and multiplying it by all applicable adjustment factors. Here I've listed all of the adjustment factors that might be possible. However, many of these are, are fairly uncommon and hence usually the allowable bending stress can be found often by just several factors. And so usually it's much simpler than this more complicated case that we see here. For compressive stress, we have Fc prime. That's the allowable compressive stress. It also has a bunch of adjustment factors multiplied times the table value for Fc. Notice, for example, between these two cases that I have mentioned that we see some common factors. The C sub D factor is the same. So if we learn how to use the C sub D factor for one case, we will also be knowing how to do it for other types of allowable stresses. So some of the factors may be the same, but there are some factors that are not applicable in both cases. So we have some work to do to learn how to use adjustment factors and when they are applicable to a given situation. We can see the same sort of thing with glue lamb timber. There are allowable bending stresses that we can determine for glue lamb beams. There will be adjustment factors that are multiplied times a table value. There are a lot of adjustment factors that are possible, but again, only several are usually common. Here we also show another type of allowable uh, stress, in this case, shear stress, FV prime. It too has some adjustment factors, but commonly only the C sub D factor is really necessary. Now, of course, in this uh, slide here, I have shown uh, allowable bending stress, compressive stress, and shear stress. There are other types of stresses that we would have to adjust with adjustment factors also but these are just some representative examples. One of the things that a student is confronted with when looking at examples like this is all of these factors and wondering how is it that you're going to know when they are applicable and what they are. And so the NDS code has been very deliberate to create tables that help people uh, know when to apply adjustment factors for a given situation. First, we're going to look at such a table for sawn lumber. We can see that table here, and I'm going to blow this up a little bit so you can see it better. And right here, we can see the allowable bending stress. We can see the table value, and we can see that it is to be multiplied by all of these adjustment factors. These are adjustment factors that we saw on the previous slide. This table organizes very carefully the name of each of these adjustment factors. 
and it tells you that these are the only ones that you would have to worry about when you're doing uh, adjusting the bending stress to get an allowable bending stress value. This table is very useful then because there are other types of allowable stresses such, a, such as tension, allowable tension, and you can see the uh, adjustment factors that are required for that case. So this table is intend to, intended to be helpful to you to know which factors are ones that you have to consider. Now once you know what those factors are, then you can think about them one at a time and ask yourself whether or not they apply to the particular situation or the particular design that you are currently considering. That means we have some work to do to learn about each of these adjustment factors and to understand how to get the values to use for them and to be able to determine when they are applicable or not. But most importantly in this table, it just helps us to know which ones we have to even consider for a particular type of allowable stress. And that is the usefulness of this table. Now since we are doing allowable stress design, you can see that we only will be considering this first group of uh, adjustment factors. We are not going to be covering LRFD, so these last three columns are not ones that we will have to worry about. Now, this table is specifically for sawn lumber, and it is on page 29 of the 2015 NDS uh, codebook. And uh, so, certainly, it's good for you to know about this table and to make use of it. So, don't ever lose sight of the fact that whenever you're trying to find a certain type of allowable stress, this table helps you know which adjustment factors might be applicable to you. Let's now move to another table. This next table is very similar, except that this table is for glued laminated timber. So if you're considering glue lamb beams, you would look at the adjustment factors in this list. If you were looking at, for example, shear stress, we would look in this row here and see which uh, adjustment factors might be applicable to us. So the same principles apply that we discussed on the former slide or the former table for sawn lumber. It's just that there is a special table for glued laminated timber. Now as I indicated previously in this video, there are other tables in other chapters of the NDS code that cover other adjustment factors. And again, those are tables that are intended to help you and to keep organized as far as knowing which adjustment factors might apply to the particular stress that you are trying to get an allowable stress for. Let's now move to the next slide. One of the very, very common adjustment factors is the duration factor. Let's blow this up a little bit. The duration factor is a factor that depends on the type of loads that are being applied to the structure. In fact, when we are designing according to allowable stress design, we have to consider different types of ASD load combinations. And based on which load combination that we are considering or designing for, that will determine which C sub D factor that we are going to need to use. So here's the basic rule and then we'll look at these examples up above. The rule is that for a given load combination, the duration factor is based on the load in the load combination of shortest duration. So for example, in this very first uh, load combination example, we see that it only has dead load and live load in it. Dead load is always on the structure, but live load 
floor live load, in fact, here can be on the structure sometimes, and then sometimes it's, it moves and goes somewhere else. So it can be a shorter load than dead load, since dead load is permanent. So in this case, a uh, live load for a floor is consistent with the description of occupancy live load. So the duration factor would be 1.0, and you can see that here in our example. For roof live load, the roof live load is usually there temporarily, mostly during construction is usually the worst time during the structure's life for a roof live load. And so if we look up here, uh, there's this kind of a, a construction load that really they're referring to roof live loads and the duration factor in that case is 1.25. For snow load, that's something that people tend to uh, think of as something that may be on the structure for a couple of months during the winter. And so for snow load, a value of C sub D is 1.15. And certainly all of these loads we've looked at so far are going to be of a shorter duration than dead load. Uh, the very last one here, if we look through this list, we see dead, we see floor live, we see wind, uh, roof live or snow, and the shortest duration load out of all of these that are in this combination is wind. Wind can be there for a few seconds and then it dies down, then it comes back and, and, and uh, every few seconds there may be a gust of wind. So it's really short duration uh, impulse type loads that wind is causing. Since wind is the load of shortest duration in this load combination, that's going to be like, you know, maybe a 10 minute type load uh, where the biggest uh, amount of wind comes along or it's uh, there for a little while and then leaves. And so we have a duration factor of 1.6. Earthquake load is also in that same category. It's not something that lasts a long time. It's quite short relative to other types of loads. And so we have 1.6 for the duration factor in that case. And that table that I have read here is in the uh, NDS uh, 2015 NDS codebook and uh, that covers the duration factor, which is very, very common factor to use to calculate your allowable stresses. Another factor in sawn lumber design is the size factor, C sub F, and it's most commonly used for two by and four by members. For posts and timbers or beams and stringers, there is a C sub F factor, but for members that are about 12 inches or less, uh, it's going to be a value of one and you wouldn't have to worry about it. But for pretty good size uh, beam members, uh, you would want to look at this C sub F uh, factor, look that up and use the appropriate formula to calculate uh, what that would be. But for 2 by and 4 by members, there are going to be some formulas, or I, I should say not formulas, but rather some tables that we'll, we will use to get the size factor. The size factor is not used for glue lamb beams. Now we'll look on this next page, we're going to see how to find the size factor. Now I will blow this page up here and we're going to look at the table at the bottom of the page here and we're going to see the size factor. This table has the size factor uh, for uh, different types of stress. It applies when we're considering bending stress, tension stress, or compressive stress parallel to grain. It also depends on the width of the member that we might be uh, designing and we, it also depends on the thickness of the member in the case of bending stress. Furthermore, in the very first column, the value we read out of the table also uh, depends on the grade of lumber that we are using. So let's suppose that we were doing uh, Douglas fir number one, 
and we considered a two by six, so it's gonna be six inch in width, it's gonna be two inch in thickness, and we're considering bending stress, let's suppose. So our C sub X, uh, C sub F factor would be 1.3. Now, if we were considering uh, an, this as an adjustment for tension uh, stress, we would use 1.3 here, but for compression parallel to grain, the C sub F factor would be 1.1. If we wanted to consider a uh, dug for number one again, but consider a uh, four by 12, we would come over here and we'd look down here to find a C sub F factor of 1.1 if we were looking at bending stress. Um, as you can see, tension stress and compression stress, uh, the size does, uh, or the, I should say the thickness does not affect C sub F, but the width or the depth of the beam does affect those uh, values of C sub F. Now, some other adjustment factors are on this page. We have the repetitive use factor, C sub R. Um, this applies for bending for two by and four by members, and the value is 1.15 and it is for such members that are used as joists, truss cords, rafters, studs, planks, decking, or similar members, which are in contact or spaced, not more than 24 inch on center, are not less than three in number, and are joined by floor, roof, or other load distributing elements. Now, what that means is if you have three roof rafters, let's say, that are not spaced more than 24 inch on center, and they have plywood on top of those members that uh, allows them to somewhat help each other or share the loads, then you kind of have uh, things that fall into this category of repetitive um, members. And oftentimes in a roof or a floor, you have three or many more members side by side that fit into this type of a category and you would be able to use the repetitive uh, member factor. There's also a flat use factor. Now, of course, this means that if you were to take a two by four and rather than loading it in bending in the, about the strong axis, what if you were to uh, place this beam in a way such that it is to be loaded uh, about the weak axis. In other words, it's laying in the flat direction. Uh, in that case, you have so this C sub F sub U uh, factor, and depending on the depth and the thickness, uh, you can read out what those values are for that factor. Most of the time, we are not using beams in the flat configuration, so this factor would not apply to us. Now, also, if we have lumber that has a moisture content that exceeds 19% for extended periods of time, then we would have to consider the wet service factor, C sub M. And you could read that out of this table here. This page is a, uh, a page of factors that uh, is in the NDS supplement. It, this page is right before the pages of table values for sawn lumber that are two by and four by in size. And so look for this page in the NDS supplement. There's also a temperature factor that's not shown here. It's a C sub T. And um, it has to do with uh, the design or adjustment of table values when the wood members are going to be used in a structure that is kept at very, very high temperatures. You, usually, the C sub T factor is not one that we have to worry about or consider. And also, this moisture factor that we talked about before, on a set of structural drawings, it is common for structural engineers to specify that all lumber shall have moisture content less than or equal to 19%. In such a case, then, we would not ever have to use the moisture factor. 
it would just have a value of 1.0. And so uh, C sub m and C sub t are factors that rarely we have to worry about. Let's now move to the next slide. Here's a kind of a summary for saw and lumber. Here are the various adjustment factors. Uh, we've talked about some of these already. We also have a beam stability factor. If uh, lateral torsional buckling of a beam is possible, then we would have to consider the C sub L factor. The truth is, though, that most of the time we have plywood on a roof or plywood on a floor. Uh, and the plywood is nailed into the top of the beams. The top edge is the portion of the beam that tends to go into compression due to bending. And hence, because of that plywood on the floor or the roof, uh, stability for beams is usually not something we have to worry about. For columns, we have a stability factor, C sub P that factor is certainly one that would have to be used if you're designing a column. And so uh, column design or um, using the table val value for compression parallel to grain is often going to be adjusted by the C sub P factor. Uh, we also have the incising factor. This is going to be required if you're using pressure treated wood. If you've ever been at a uh, store that has lumber, sometimes some of the wood has uh, little incisions in the side of the wood in a regular pattern. And this allows that wood to have chemicals injected into the wood uh, through those incisions. And uh, those chemicals are intended to uh, you know, keep the wood from decaying uh, due to um, uh, being in the ground perhaps or being exposed to water, being outside. Uh, and so um, the incising factor is required because uh, those incisions do reduce the capacity of the wood members just a little bit. There are some other factors down here. I won't go over all of them. But uh, again, remember, we have those tables that help us identify these and when they are applicable. Let's now look a little bit for a second here. We can see the beam stability factor, C sub L. It's kind of a complicated formula. We're not going to go into it in great depth just now but I'm just going to point out that this is what the C sub L factor looks like and there is a procedure for calculating that value. Also earlier I mentioned that there was a formula for the size factor C sub F if we were looking at timbers such as uh, posts and timbers or beams and stringers and there's certain rules about when we need to worry about using this formula but oftentimes we don't need to um, and again, this is for beams and stringers or posts and timbers. That's the, what that formula would look like. Let's now go to the next slide. And we can see here that we have the column stability factor that I mentioned also. Uh, C sub P, again, another formula. It looks similar to the beam stability factor. And again, there is a procedure for how to calculate the terms in this formula so that you can get a value for C sub P. Now let's move on to glue lamb members. And as we indicated before, there is no size factor for glue lamb members, but there is a volume factor. And so it is like a size factor, but it is specific to glue lamb members, C sub V, and uh, it would be in particular for the case of bending of glue laminated beams. This would be used to adjust FBXX values or perhaps FBYY, but usually, as we've indicated, we're usually loading beams about the strong axis, and so we would be adjusting FBXX. Now this formula here to calculate C sub V has some terms in it. For instance, there is L, a length. 
and it is the distance between points of zero moment along the length of the beam in units of feet. Now for a simply supported beam, the zero moments will be at each end of the beam. But for a beam that is spanning over multiple supports, it might be that points of zero moment are not necessarily at the supports. And so that is a definition of L that it is good for a student uh, to recognize. We also have D here in the formula, which is the depth of the beam. And we also have B, which is the width of the beam. And we also have a factor in the exponent, which is an X. And for uh, Douglas fir type wood, uh, we're going to have a value of X equal to 10. And so these exponents will be 0 0.1. Now, in the previous slides, uh, we talked about the C sub L factor, the C sub P factor, and here now the C sub V factor. All of those factors, C sub P, C sub L, and C sub V, must be less than or equal to 1. If you ca ever calculate a value greater than 1, then you need to, uh, something is wrong, you should be using the value of 1.0. Now, uh, or less. Uh, if you calculate something less, well certainly you, you would use that, but you don't want to ever use something greater than 1. Now, the volume factor is something that, as I mentioned, we use for beams. And uh, we also could have the stability factor C sub L for glue lamb beams also. However, you never use C sub V and C sub L at the same time. And so you are to use the smaller of the two calculated values between C sub L or C sub V. So that is also something that's very important to remember. Now, for glue lamb members, I'll also mention in summary here some other factors. Some of these, as you can see, C sub D, C sub M, C sub T, C sub L, C sub P, uh, C sub F sub U, C sub B. These are ones that we've seen even for saw and lumber. And so if you've learned how to use those for that case, you will also uh, know a lot of information about how to apply it also for glue lamb beams. There are some other factors here, curvature factor, uh, interaction factor, and stress reduction factor. I will not go over those. They are not usually something we have to worry about. But suffice it to say, we have adjustment factors for glue lamb members, and we can go to our NDS codebook and learn how to uh, apply those factors and how to calculate them. So in summary here, uh, a few comments. Don't forget that adjustment factor tables can help you. Many of the adjustment factors are rare and you won't have to worry about using them, but it's still important that you know what they are and uh, can recognize uh, when they do arise and you do have to use them sometimes. Often, the modulus of elasticity will have no adjustment factors, and hence E prime will be equal to E. Uh, lastly, the duration factor, C sub D, does not apply to compression perpendicular to grain or the modulus of elasticity, since these things are related to serviceability. So if you were looking at those tables for sawn lumber or glue lamb beams, with all of the adjustment factors, if you looked at compression perpendicular to grain or modulus of elasticity, you would see that this duration factor is not listed as something that you have to consider uh, to uh, uh, adjust those table values. Well, hopefully that is helpful to you as you consider adjustment factors in timber design and uh, hopefully uh, that will benefit you as you consider or as you continue to learn about timber design.